Are you a little nervous? I'll say. I'll be glad when this is over. Now, DNA analysis permits us to detect these genetic time bombs years in advance. This mother of four from New York recently underwent a test to predict whether she would one day suffer a lingering death, the hallmark of a disease that has stalked her family for generations. First symptoms usually are slurred speech, um, a gait, the walk is off, uh, memory lapse that comes on gradually. Um, eventually it gets very debilitating where the person cannot walk, uh, cannot talk anymore. Um, my cousin now is unable to chew food and swallow. She just had a gastrostomy tube put in and she's fed through a tube. Uh, severe weight loss. It just chews away at you little by little and uh, some it affects different patients different ways uh, some are affected mentally and they they do not remember or know who you, who they are who you are um, and other patients are uh, their mind is sharp right to the very end to the day they die and they're very aware and they're trapped into a body that they cannot control the disease is called Huntington's chorea. Here at Massachusetts General Hospital, a team has been investigating its cause. The test is only a spin-off of this research, not its main purpose. Nonetheless, the team realized the test could release members of Huntington's families from the agony of uncertainty. Daily, sometimes hourly, drop a glass and you wonder if you have it. If you slur your speech, if you walk tilted, the fear is there and you live with it daily. I had a camera and took a whole roll of film and the pictures came out blurred and I panicked because I knew I had it. Exactly at what age should I be concerned about the onset of Huntington's disease? Well, Huntington's disease is an illness that usually is manifest in midlife. The most common age that people begin to show symptoms of Huntington's disease is between 35 and 39. And the average age of onset is 40. But you can see that some people will begin to show symptoms in their teens and 20s, and other people will be in their 50s or 60s. People who come and ask for this test are wondering about whether they should get married, whether they should have children, whether they should go to medical school. Some people come wondering if they should uh, maybe go into professional sports. One person who, who was thinking, well, my professional sports career will probably be over by the time I'm 35. Maybe that's a good career for me to pursue rather than going into a more academic pursuit. The choices that people have to face when they have a parent who has Huntington's disease are extraordinary. And they're asking to make those choices with as much information as we're able to provide for them. If either parent had Huntington's, the odds on getting it are one in two. As in cystic fibrosis, the gene itself has not been found. But when blood from a Huntington's victim is analyzed, one of a group of recognizable fragments of DNA is always present. Before these markers can be identified, a variety of chemicals are used to treat the white cells which yield the most DNA. Finally, the solution is mixed with cold alcohol and the molecule of life becomes visible. DNA looks like nothing so much as wet cotton wool. The long strands can now be chopped up and the individual fragments of DNA separated so that any markers present can be detected. By comparing the DNA of the person being tested with that of other family members, the lab verdict on whether this appalling disease is present is considered 96% accurate. The day I found out 
my test was negative was um, a day I'll never forget my whole life. I came here knowing he was going to tell me it was positive. Um, I just knew that I was going to have it. Um, the odds, unfortunately, in our family are not all that good. And um, I really didn't think mine was going to be negative. When he told me my test came out negative, I just sort of slumped. I couldn't even cry. Some of the people that we've seen that I've given results to are people that I've known for years and that I've known their families and participated in the diagnosis of their parents. And to be able to tell people that they have very low risk has been very, very nice. It's been extraordinary for them. Uh, they've been ecstatic, obviously, uh, jumping out of the, their chair. It's been very pleasant to watch the, res the reactions of their family members. And as they come back and tell us about uh, how they've shared the news with their children in some instances and the relief that that's been for themselves and I think sometimes the person that it's been most pleasant for has been the parent who didn't have the disease that surviving parent who watched a husband or a wife with the illness sometimes that person's now either very disabled or has already died to know that their child is going to be spared that's an extraordinary relief for them that's been very pleasant no, I didn't throw a party. I went home very quietly, very somber, and it was probably 48 hours um, before I really shared it with a lot of people. I, when I went home, um, the first place I went to, my pastor came with me uh, the day I went to see Dr. Myers and get the, get the results. And the first thing I did do was go home to my dad, and I told him, he did not know I was coming here to have the pretest, And I told him that I would not have Huntington's. And he put his head in his hands and he just cried. And he said, thank God that at least one of my children will not be chewed up with this after watching your wife and your kids. It was the greatest gift that he could ever have.